Um, about a year ago we had the batteries professionally tested um, and we were told we probably had about a year left in them. Yeah. Some batteries is bad. This one is 78, 80, 84, 81, 73, 84, 72. So these batteries obviously weren't holding the charge very well so we were extra reliant on our battery charger. It's bad, okay. well, you need to replace. Okay. You can keep this one only for one year. As usual, that yet another thing is broken down on the boat. It's a real shame because my brother's come out and you know his little boy, and we've been waiting months for this day. And first day out, the generator stopped charging, so we had to come back, and we had to spend the whole day looking for an engineer. And so it's more money. It's just money just thrown at people to try and solve little problems that we don't know how to solve. About mid-season, we were in Ibiza. Episode. 26 I think and we were at anchor at the time and we suddenly realized that the battery charger wasn't charging the batteries um, It wasn't taking a charge anymore from the generator I still at this point wasn't sure whether it was the generator causing the problem or it was the actual battery charger As anybody who's sailed through the Blairix knows the marinas in uh, Ibiza in particular are extremely expensive but there is a, a marina in uh, San Antonio the charges by the half hour so you can go there do some shopping fill up with water charge your batteries and get back off again so we went in there paid for our half hour and tried charging the batteries up from shore power um, but unfortunately we had the same error coming up on high and low voltage so it was definitely the battery charger that was at fault so we keep having to go backwards and forwards to this anchorage to try and get the, uh, the batteries charged and then back again tomorrow morning to charge them again because if you run the engine at too lower revs then uh, it's not so good for the diesel engine because it starts to build up carbon deposits San Antonio we haven't managed to leave yet because um, we're still trying to sort out engineers um, so we went out one today and tomorrow he's going to see if you can see what the problem is again so um, not really getting very far in Ibiza at the moment we had a, an electrician come in take a look he couldn't work out what the problem was We couldn't get in touch with any Spanish dealers, so we got in touch with some UK Master Vault dealers who basically diagnosed the problem and said it was an internal component failure. Um, and the whole unit had to be sent back to them for assessment. So the model was a December 2010 model, so it was out of guarantee. So a new charger would have cost us about £1,800, about $2,300 or €2,000. Um, it's not something that was in our budget, we couldn't afford that, but it was still eligible for the flat rate repair scheme. So the only thing we could do really was to send it back to see if it could be repaired. We became absolutely fastidious with our electrical use, which is no bad thing, but um, it was very inconvenient, especially when we had lots of friends coming out at the time. So every day we move to a different bay, we run our engine and that charges up the batteries to 100% again, and that's sort of working fine, so we've just got to keep going around this island. Um, until we sort our solar panels out, but that's yeah another big job in itself really. So if we're going probably over about five knots at least, uh, we don't need to have the engine at all, and our prop gen just charges it all up, so that's quite good. It's it's quite good actually, just living like that, quite simply for a while, not constantly putting the generator on, and I'm just trying to find places where they sell ice as well, which helps. But yeah, we're kind of living off our very low power at the moment. It's it's doing just fine. <laughs> So we had quotes for this flat rate repair scheme ranging from £409 to £519. €470 Euros to €600 Euros or $530 to $650. But it's a lot cheaper than buying a new one. The only problem with this was there was a six week turnaround period. So we sent it back to Aquifax um, in Southampton in the UK via Arenka's brother when he went back. Um, and they confirmed it was an internal component failure and it would take six weeks to turn it around. So when we got the word that it was repaired, we got UPS to forward it to Santa Ponza in Mallorca, where we were at the time. So that's been back to the UK and then I think it's been sent to Poland or something and then it's been sent back to the UK and then it's been sent back out here. Obviously there's been the courier charges as well, so it's been an expensive week. Okay, I watched the electrician taking it out, um, so I took a video of him. Um, and now I want to attempt to get it back in. So they've packed it up really well. We've got um, the manual and uh, a new 
battery temperature sensor and we've also got, we've got the um, new mounting plate. Looks like new really, I don't know if they polished it up or cleaned it or something, but uh, it's certainly coming back very clean. I've just checked the serial number here against the picture that I took when it was in place. The serial number is completely different to the photograph I took. So this is a completely new charger for the uh, price of a repair, which is great. And they haven't made a big song and dance about it. I sent any letters to say that they've done that. It's pretty good customer service. Well done, Master Vault. But the manual is pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. Luckily, the wires are all in place from the last install. Um, the instructions were pretty clear. So I don't think we should have a problem. Unless I'm 99% certain of what I'm doing with a 230 volt system, um, I won't touch it. I watched the electrician take it out and the manual seemed quite straightforward, so I thought it was a job that I could quite easily tackle. I took particular care to watch the electrician when he took them out. Is there anything that could go wrong? No, but yes, uh, if you reverse the polarity, you can blow your batteries up. You can build up poisonous gases in the battery bank. There's no protection if you reverse the polarity. <laughs> So it's midsummer and the engine room is obviously like a sauna. But it was a simple job. There's only five wires. Um, the mounting bracket was already in place from the previous model. So it was just a matter of screwing it in place and attaching the wires. As unreliable as the generator is, it was still fantastic to basically get the battery charger back online so we could charge these batteries up whenever we wanted. The battery's charging really quickly and um, nothing's blown up, no wires have burnt and Woody has done it, brilliant. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward and the manual was really good as well. Two wires to the batteries and then the three to the generator, so. Very good, I'm very proud of you. So we're wintering at the moment, we're on shore power, batteries are not a problem but obviously we're going to set sail again in a, in a month or two and we're going to need those batteries to be able to hold a charge. We would love to get lithium batteries but obviously they're way out of our price range. Um, so I think we're just going to replace the Victrons we have with some AGMs and hopefully that will last us another four or five years. The generator is a good make, it's an Onan Cummins but uh, the spare parts for it are very expensive and it is over 20 years old. Um, and not as reliable as it could be. So we're getting the solar installed uh, before we head off, which means we won't be as reliable on the generator. Three Panasonic HIT 245 watt panels. Wow. So comment below with any advice. Let's share the knowledge, hints, tips, and advice on battery chargers, particularly the MasterVolt Charge Master. For this video, I'd like to thank all the advice and help I got from Aquafax in Southampton and Fisher Panda in Dorset, UK, and also UPS for being so reliable. So thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, a like, uh, click on the notification bell and subscribe. And it goes without saying, thanks to our patrons who support us in everything we do, uh, from the production costs to advice. If you'd like to become a patron and share on our journey on a more personal level, it's very easy. Just click on the link in the description on any of the videos, and that'll take you to the Patreon website where you just follow the instructions. Thanks for watching.